in Dwight Wilson, Armageddon, now that the final chapter before the epilogue is Jerusalem, what now? He's talking about the impact of the Six Day War of 1967 upon the mindset of premillenarians as well as Jews. And here he brings in two of the heavyweight evangelicals of the day, Oral Roberts and Billy Graham and his ministry. Israel had made a conscious attempt to exploit the reservoir of goodwill among the premillenarians in addition to courting the favor of all Christian communities. Evangelist Oral Roberts, in his 1963 book, The Drama of the End Time, recalls that when he was a guest of the Israeli government, several government officials sat with him all day long because they wanted to assure him of his welcome, even though Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion had been unable to keep an earlier appointment due to an emergency. Roberts' appointment was postponed, whereas others were simply cancelled. The Israelis' time was not spent in vain. The television evangelist returned to vibrantly spread the message. This is a direct quote from Roberts. When I departed from Israel, I did not lose the spell that had fallen over me. Even now I feel the surge, the rise, the swell, the thrill of deep emotion. There is something going on in Israel. It is of eternal consequence, and the spiritual significance of that something leaps in my blood like a flame. God's ancient people are carving out an empire. They are literally creating it with their own hands. That's what the Bible told us they would do. The meaning of it in terms of a coming great world revival and the second coming of Jesus has thrilled me to the very fiber and core of my being. Now that stands in direct contrast to the response of certain Orthodox rabbis in Israel itself at the time who were dismayed at this development of Christian support for the Zionist cause. Now Billy Graham's associate, Cliff Barrows. Evangelist Cliff Barrows recounts a similar extraordinary welcome at a special showing of the Billy Graham film, His Land, for Prime Minister Golda Meir. This film had been criticized for portraying an unfavorable image of the Arabs while prof profi profiling the Jews in glowing terms. But Rabbi Tenenbaum called the film perhaps the most beautiful, sympathetic portrayal of the people of Israel restored to their ancestral land that has been made by any Christian since the creation of the Jewish state. Just two months after the Sixth Day War, the Israeli government sent Dr. Yona Malachi, that's spelled M-A-L-A-C-H-Y, Yona Malachi, a member of the Department of Christian Ministries of the Department of Religious Affairs to the United States, to study Christian attitudes toward Israel. Dr. Maliki knew more Christian eschatology than most theology professors and was familiar with all the leading premillenarian authors. He was released from active duty with the Army of Occupation in order to work on a book about Christian prophetic writings concerning the restoration of Israel. In a visit to Biola College, he expressed appreciation to the faculty for their support of the Israeli cause but was critical of the fact that there had not been more tangible support from Protestant sources during the Six-Day War. An example of the type of active support that appealed to Dr. Maliki was the manifestation, of, or rather the manifesto of the fundamentalists of America to the Jews of the world, which denounced anti-Semitism in the 1930s. This document had been signed by 51 leading fundamentalists, 15 of whom were associated with Biola at one time or another. As a result of this Israeli goading, Biola issued a proclamation concerning Israel and the nations. The opening paragraph provided firm but cautious support. Here's a quote from it. Recent events have focused the attention of the world upon biblical prophecies relating to the fulfillment of Israel's destiny. Prominent among predicted end-time events related to the coming of Jesus the Messiah is the return of the Jews to their land and their redemption. It appears that recent developments in the Middle East may be preparing the way for these great prophetic events. Analysts of contemporary developments should exercise caution at this point, however, in equating particular events with the fulfillments, per se, of special prophecy. End of quote. 
Included was a word of warning for those who were not warm enough in their support of Israel. Again, a direct quote. Throughout its history, the nation Israel has been the object of opposition and attack by Satan, the arch enemy of God's purpose and program. Untaught and unholy men have unwittingly cooperated with the devil in this. It is our conviction that the true people of God should not be found in league with those who oppose the will and work of God for Israel. End of quote. If Israel's critics were demonic, it would seem to follow that Israel's enemies, the Arabs, were too. But the proclamation made a special point of heading off Arab antipathy. And here's a direct quote again. God's purpose for the Arab world includes promises of national enlargement and blessing. They, along with all Gentiles, are the objects of God's love and of the proclamation of his grace. Therefore, we acknowledge our indebtedness to them, as to all nations, and desire to contribute to their special social and material needs. End of quote. The document conspicuously avoided comment on the righteous or the rightness or wrongness of the Israeli occupation. More to come. I'll put in a link to one of our basic library for Jehovah's Witnesses selection. And this is uh, based on the work of Nathaniel West who wrote the definitive work on premillennialism, the thousand year reign of Christ. So I've advocated for that book and this particular video's theme is the Gentile times end with the reappearance of Christ. That seems to be the biblical position. So one can understand the excitements caused by the 1967 war and the subsequent 1973 war, but we cannot agree with the position. No, indeed, as long as there is no uh, revival among the Israel is Israelis themselves, we cannot say that the Gentile times have ended because they haven't yet met yet with their Lord and their Savior. I'll put that link into Nathaniel West, the, the plug for Nathaniel West's wonderful classic book, The Thousand Year Reign of Christ. See you next time.